Creating applications with synchronous and asynchronous implementations can be quite awkward at times. You have to think about you know, whether to have things in a different class or whether to have things in different variable names or function names. And if you have stuff in function names, you know, how do you make it distinct? Do you just put async in front of it or do you, you know, make it different in these different ways? And it can be really awkward for the user as well to, you know, differentiate between these two, especially have some slightly awkward names. And what I'm going to show off in this video is a way to make that no longer a problem. So like the thumbnail said, we will learn how to do something like that. So my function being the same function of being awaitable and non-awaitable at the same time. So what we can use is a library to do this. So we can do pip install xsync. This is a very new library. It was only released a few days ago. And I know this because once again, it's one of my libraries. Like the analytics video, this is a bit of an advertisement. Uh, but this was a collaborative project between me and my friend John. He kind of came up with the original idea and the original proof of concept. And I turned it into a decorator and ultimately created the package async. Oh, sorry, xsync, as you see here. And xsync provides a series of decorators to make, you know, what I just showed off actually possible. So if we just import it, and we're going to do, you know, reading a text file as an example. So I created our top secret text file off camera. We'll have to wait to see what's in there. But to actually create our uh, function that can be awaited and not awaited, we have to define something called a hybrid callable. Now this is what xsync refers to it internally as. And to do that, we can use xsync.asHybrid. And you have to have these brackets, otherwise it doesn't work. And then you just have, say, read uh, text, and then the path. And we can do with open you know, path, just kind of as you would normally do, as f uh, return f.read. And this, you know, reads our text file and displays it, um, also, and returns the value of it back out. You know, it's it's pretty simple. You know, we're gonna actually have a strip as well to strip the new line away. And we also need an async implementation because this isn't synchronous. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can create, you know, async read text here um, with path. And then if I just install AIO files real quick, which is a, a pretty good library for, for asynchronously reading files. And just import that up here. And then uh, with AO files dot open path as F, we can then return await F dot read dot strip. And I think I need to do that. Yes, I do. Oh, that's not liking that. Why is that not liking that? Uh, oh, doesn't it make this async? That, that would probably help if I did actually make it async. So this is the async implementation of our function up here, but it's not currently, you know, actually workable. So what we can do is we can do xsync.setAsync implementation and then pass read text in there. So what this decorator is doing is it's taking this function, which has been registered as a hybrid function, and we are setting the async implementation of our read text function to this. So we do actually define a separate function, which can still be called on its own. But now, uh, this is essentially telling xsync that when you await read text, you should actually run this function instead. So if I just, uh, you know, put up a bit of an interface like this, if name double equals main, spelt correctly, that would help. Uh, so we could do, you know, read text and then top secret.txt. And then we can have our main here. And then we can await uh, async read text, uh, top secret.txt. I just want to prove that both of these things work on their own. And then it would be asyncio.run main. And if we now run our uh, video.py, we can see that I've have, I've missed another async. Wow, I've, 
I am really bad at this. We can see now that we didn't print anything out either. I am a phenomenal program and forgot to actually make it print the statements, but we can see that the world is in fact, as we all know, a dinosaur. It's not flat and it's not round. I am officially part of the Dinosaur Earth Society. And for those that don't understand sarcasm, that was a joke. <laughs> but I just thought it was fun here, right? Shut up. Um, so we can see that they both work fine. But instead of async retext, if we just do retext like that, it still works. And that is because if I just have a print statement here, just to show that it is definitely working. Uh, print sync async. So you print sync and then the uh, the uh, the contents of the file and then async and the contents of the file as well. Because, you know, as I previously explained, this async read text is being set as the async implementation of read text. So when read text is run or when it's awaited, xsync sees that and goes, oh, I need to run this instead. So it's basically just running this function. It's kind of cheaping out a bit. It doesn't like create its own one, but it's better off that way because like you wouldn't just want to run this, you know, synchronously in a coroutine because then it's defeating the point. You want to have your async implementation, uh, but you, you know, you want to be able to run it like this. This is the best, you know, possible solution that you could have. As well as functions, it also works in methods as well. So if I just, you know, create a class called reader real quick, um, and put that in there, remove this line as we no longer need it, uh, and then have our self and our self. And if we do R equals reader, uh, like that, oh my God, I cannot type for, I can never type on videos. It's just a thing. I've just, I've just kind of accepted that I can't type on videos. But if you do that, we can see that it does exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's a function or a method, it will just work. It also works on class methods and on static methods as well. But I'm not going to bore you with that. You could experiment with that in your own time. Um, but yeah, that is how to make uh, functions both and methods, uh, both synchronous and asynchronous. So this is just really nice, you know, fluid, dynamic interface. Um, to you know allow users to just use it a bit easier and it's really neat uh, as well but yeah if you like the video then consider liking to let me know it helps out a lot and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos like this i'd also like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now one pound a month and you can be on that screen too and i will see you next time where we talk about whatever i don't know what it would be i never seem to know but uh yeah i'll see you for that